everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Rosalinda and I love to paint in today's video I will show you how to paint this little cutie done with oil on canvas now I will say that it's a bit more difficult than the past few tutorials that we've done just because it's an animal versus still life but trust me it looks more difficult than it actually is it's not scary I promise so in the next hour, I'll show you step-by-step step how I painted this. So grab your canvas and your paint brushes and let's get started. P.S. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you like my art, be sure to check out my Etsy. Alright, so now we can get started on the sketching process. So I did sketch out a deer with um, just a mechanical pencil on some sketch paper and now I'm going to be redrawing that deer onto the canvas. To start, I'm just drawing a oval shape for the base of the head and then I'm going to draw a line down the middle and a line across. That'll help me figure out where I want to put the eyes and the nose. So now I'm just slightly readjusting the overall shape of the deer's head. Glancing back over at my initial sketch, which I did look at a reference photo for. So I'm just drawing a couple small lines to roughly indicate where I want the nose. So it's going to be a square, half square shape, and then you bring it out just a little bit, kind of like if you were drawing a top hat. And then I'll add the little nostrils. And this line will be where the chin is. Those two lines above the nose also help visualize where the rest of the snout is and then that way when we put in the eyes so like I'm doing right now it's a bit more accurate so the deer eyes are kind of like a soft diamond shape that's what I always think of when I put in animal eyes in general and now these lines above are just uh, kind of where the eyebrows are, or if they had eyebrows, that's where it would be. But in the case of the painting, I put those lines in there because that fur is slightly lighter than the rest of the forehead.
emphasizing that forehead line. And then we're gonna do the antler. And I wanted them up pretty high. Almost to the edge of the painting. So when I put in the ears, just think of piglet size ears. Um, that's the only way I could think of describing it really. Um, at least that's what I thought of when I was drawing it. So it's almost the same size as the head. And they're pretty equal. But they don't, they don't have to be exactly equal, just roughly. it's a bit more off to the side. Finally working on the neck. So the deer is looking at us head on, but the body is positioned to the side. And the body goes out that way. And then we'll just add a couple extra lines to emphasize what direction they're facing. Okay, and for the most part, that is it on the sketching process. Um, like I said, it's not all that bad to sketch out, um, especially if you just take it step by step. And don't be afraid to redraw if you have to. And the eraser is your best friend when it comes to sketching out. So all I'm doing now is just adding any extra lines I feel might be necessary moving forward for the painting process. But for the most part, we are done with our sketch and shortly we will move on to the painting process. First things first, I'm going to start with the background. So I'm getting some white that is diluted a little bit with mineral spirits, not too much yet. And I'm just going to get those lighter splotches in the background in place. By the way, the photo you see on your right hand side is the reference photo I used and inspired me to paint this. It is free online and the link will be down below. I also used an app called Photo Lab to edit the colors of the photo and help me get a better visualization of where I wanted the painting to go. So 
So I'm still just adding a base white layer. And now we're going to go over with a little bit of yellow to warm up those spots. And taking some of that yellow ochre as well and just sort of dabbing it around the edges of those yellow spots it doesn't have to be like every single edge but it helps blur those uh, those background images a little bit better and going back over in white to make that a little less opaque. And again, like I did with the last painting, I am just tapping the color in and building from light to dark or, you know, light to the warmer, richer colors. So this time I, I added a bit of red with the white and the yellow ochre. And doing the same thing I did on the other side. I also added a bit more mineral spirit so it's more diluted. And it'll also dry faster so that's a plus. I'm just going to go through each of those white spots that I had put up and add a bit of warmth to each of them. Lightly tapping in the color. And don't be worried if your oil color goes over that dark gesso that we had placed before. Um, my canvas was already primed technically with white so the only reason why I'm adding or I added black gesso to begin with was for color reason and for anyone that doesn't know you always want to start with an off-white base that just makes it easier for you to mix colors and mix colors more accurately And now I'm bringing in some of that Viridian Green. I did muddy it with that orange to help it blend a bit a little bit better. And then I added the pure color on top of that for a bit more depth. And this part of the painting is probably the closest to what I've done in tutorials so far. It's very loose, it's very freeing, it's just playing around with the colors. 
and making very loose shapes. And right now I'm just playing with different values of the greens and the orange and yellow. Keeping an eye on my reference photo to make sure I don't go too far out of whack, but also not being worried of getting exact colors right, just like always. It's our own interpretation after all. I am using a, a medium sized brush, not too big, not too small. Um, by the way, this painting that I'm working on, just like the last few, have been 8x10, and this is also 8x10. Um, so even though this is a medium sized brush, it's, it's the biggest I will go for this size painting. When I get into details, I'll use very, very fine brushes. But if you'd like to do this painting larger, of course, go right ahead. For beginners out there, I'd actually recommend it. Bigger is easier. It takes longer, but it is easier. I'd say the easiest size to start with is probably... I started with 11 by 14. That was the sizes that I felt comfortable with. So if you can find canvases in that size, or even canvas paper, that would be good. So I'm just going over that white area again, since it was a bit too see-through. We're just continuing to add various colors into our background, just tapping it on. Um, we're almost done with it, and actually overall this painting doesn't take terribly long, something I really do like about it. Um, I just, I like when paintings come together quickly. I'm just adding bits of brown and red into the mix. blend the colors a little bit better and now we're getting in that green closest to where the deer's back is At this point, I'm also trying to use less mineral spirit. We're using more of just the pure color and the colors mixed together. Um, just so it's not as opaque.
this obviously is up to you in terms of how far you want to take it. Um, yeah. This part is pretty self-explanatory, so I don't have a whole lot to currently say until we move on to a deer, but luckily we're almost there. I'm just adding a bit more of the light green areas. building in those colors all about layering taking some yellow and white and a tiny bit of brown and we're finally finally putting down that base color for the deer So these are still pretty loose brush strokes, but they're longer and looser. And I'm kind of working with the paint in this, just kind of feeling how it wants to be blended, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm keeping the brush strokes very obvious, but also it helps show um, a little bit of texture to the deer's fur. A 
At this point too, I have moved to a slightly smaller brush. Since moving into that face is gonna be a lot more difficult to use anything but a small brush. Pretty fine tip. So I'm mixing in like a, a light blue green to get that highlight color um, on the left side of the deer's face. Even though on the palette it looks pretty blue, um, once I put it on the black it looks white basically. So I have to add a bit more green and a bit more blue to make that value stand out a little more. So at this point, the plan of attack is to get all those blue values in. So there's a little bit around the eyes, the nose, and then around the inside of the ears. Also a little bit underneath the nose as well. Um, so now I'm getting that pink tone that makes the the right ear glow just a little bit. back over with that base tan color with a little bit more white and then we're going to work on the right side of the deer's face Funny enough, I was semi-inspired to do this painting when I was walking my dog and a random deer decided to cut across the park right in front of us. And I was trying to think of, you know, false subjects to paint for these tutorials and I guess that was a sign that I should paint a deer next and so I did. So I'm not blending these colors too much. I want to keep a painterly look to it. Um, so that's why the yellow, blue, and red colors are kind of neon. And they're very stark. I'll blend them out a little bit as we go on, but I kind of like how it looks now. Now we're carefully working on that jaw for the deer. I would say the hardest part of actually physically painting the deer was the nose area. Just because it, it, it was different for me to paint. But that doesn't mean you should be afraid of trying it. This is, by the way, the first time I ever have painted and drawn a deer. Um, I've, I've painted dogs and, and cats before, but 
not a deer. So this was a, a fun challenge. So now we're dragging that white color to sort of get a white highlight to the um, to the antlers. But as you can see, I'm going to go over that several, several times. And, um, yeah, this is just getting that base layer in. I do apologize when my hand gets in the way of seeing what's actually being painted. Um, when I'm painting precisely with a very small brush, sometimes I do like to kind of anchor my pinky against the, um, the easel. So it's just, it's something that I like to do to have a little bit more stability when I paint. So our face is quickly coming into shape. Um, I'm adding some more dark purples, browns, and um, blues to the left side, and then yellows and white and light brown on the right side. And that'll just help the deer's face pop out a little more. So I'm blending the colors just a little bit in the face. Um, it it softens it a little bit, and I will layer it more as we go on. But um, I wanted to make sure I had a smooth base so I can focus on the eye itself, and then add shadows and stuff. Although I did notice just now that the left eye of the deer looks like he has a black eye. Aww. Don't worry, I'll fix that. So I haven't mentioned this yet, but when it comes to painting any sort of face, be it human face or animal, um, just take a section at a time. It really helps, um, you know, if you're focusing on one section at a time, you're not overwhelmed by the subject matter in any sort of case. So right now I'm focusing on the forehead While I was painting this, I was watching um, 
The Art of Racing in the Rain. It made me cry. It's a good movie though. It's a good movie, especially if you're a dog lover. And I have three pretty beautiful dogs in my life, if I do say so myself. And I've always had dogs in my life, so yeah, that, that movie hit me. But see how that soft blending is really making, especially the, the main face of the deer, um, just come alive. I think in this case I could have probably continued on with more values and I'll, I'll keep going like finishing touches of course, but in this case I was happy with less is more. And it works out because, you know, I wanted it to be a tutorial. I didn't want it to be super complicated um, and accessible for people that are new to oil paints or new to painting in general. Um, again, I know it looks difficult, but just take your time with it and you'll be fine. By the way, I'm looking at the runtime on this and we only have about 15 minutes left on the painting. Um, and I don't, I'm not a speed painter, at least I don't consider myself one. Um, I'm not rushing, this is just me casually painting as I watch a movie. So um, if you take longer, don't feel bad, it's just, it's my pace. I'm carefully adding in that smile line. I did want my deer to smile. He's a happy deer. And he should have a name. I don't know what his name is though. Comment down below if you can think of a good name. As I'm adding in the black, I'm trying very carefully to make it not look like he has a mustache. Um, so these are very small, delicate brush strokes. I'm filling in the eyes with black. And then proceeding that with using a white and just dotting that reflective light back in. And then do the same thing with some spots on the nose. So I'm using that same white, remember these paints go a long way, um, to just sort of brush a little bit of um, white where that eyebrow line was.
I was going to smooth out the colors in the ears initially, but once I put those base colors in, I liked how it looked kind of sketchy. Um, and almost like, I don't know, like a chalk drawing or something. So I decided to keep it in. And just kind of go with it. I'm adding just a little bit of black to again um, paint in some fur and also work with the high or the shadow area of the antlers. I'm also thinking of adding bits of gold foil into the background once I'm once it's completely dry. I'm not sure yet though. I think it'd look cool with the color combination, um, but I'm not completely convinced yet. more white to make the fur and the ears stand out and then we'll do the antlers which I spent a lot more time than I thought it would painting that um, especially with that dark black line that I'm filling in right now both of those sides it's another very precise line that you use. Easy to mess up as you see I just did. But luckily I can just go back over with white and fix it. I also tried adding just a tiny bit of orange um, as just an additional layer to the antlers. Not too much though. Um, I didn't want it to get lost into the background. So I went back over with white. Not the whole thing, just a little bit. 
and then um, went over with black again. Now, the thing is that white and black make gray, so I had to put quite a bit of black in order for it to stand out again. I'm just adding that line to separate the ear from the antler. I'm pulling that line up and that immediately makes a difference. So I added black to the edge of that jawline trying to make the um, subject stand out a little bit more from the background. Um, however, I realized that um, it just it kind of did the opposite effect. But I used that black to my advantage and added some extra shadow um, under the neck and kind of pulled that down and added it to the fur. But then I have to go back over with white and then um, that will fix my problem. But very, very light touch with the white. So it'll give sort of a, a glow to the edge of the face. Just a little bit. So at this point we're working on finishing touches. Adding a, a uh, highlight line to the back. That one spot behind the ear did look a little muddied and unfinished, so I, I did go back over it at the last minute.
so yeah these are all little touch-ups um after i finished filming this video i did add a few extra lines but for the most part what you see is what is the finished product course going back over that antler line one more time because it just wasn't quite where I wanted it to be I'm sorry, I don't have much to say about that. Um, it's basically the same thing I did the first time. <laughs> Just going over the same area um, and figuring out the balance of black to white that I want there. Just darkening the bottom of the antler. Want there you go. Now it's better. Just blending that out. And we are done. Go ahead and put your signature there, whatever you'd like. And this is the final product. I hope you enjoyed watching and um, leave a comment down below if you'd like to see more paintings. And thank you for watching. <laughs>